Hi guys, this is Ideas of Ice and Fire, and I decided to create this video because after I uploaded my Dune Messiah video, I created like this 20 minute audio recording where I dived into some of the deeper themes and just some of the stuff that I wanted to talk about that I didn't include in the video. And this video, we're going to talk a little bit more, well, in this audio recording, because there's not going to be much or any editing in this, we're going to talk about Leto's sacrifice and the golden path. Now, Leto's sacrifice is that he is more human than anyone, than than anyone that's ever lived. Once he undergoes the spice trance and, and he and he takes on the symbiote skin, it changes his consciousness in a really crazy way because he is in God Emperor of Dune. Leto can literally go back and live through the life of a person in his memory anyone he can pick any person throughout human history so he's the most human person but at the same time he's not human anymore like he can't even really have contact with a person because the moisture in their skin is going to burn him because like the like he's got a worm skin on basically and water is poison to the worm so like he is the most human yet he's not even human anymore and that's a lot of suffering and also he remembers all of the pain of human history he remembers all of that suffering he remembers all of the pain so he's lived through world war ii and the crusades he's been tortured he's been like raped he's been murdered like like the entire spectrum of human experience leto has experienced it in full force it is not like paul the way he can just go back and look at these memories and just kind of see them from a different perspective leto can go back and live through these memories like, it's, he's that powerful. And there's an immense burden that comes with that. Watching everyone that he will ever love die. And there's just so much sadness to this character. There's a beautiful quote from God Emperor of Dune. Um, and this is uh, basically, uh, these people still Leto's journals, some of his journals, basically. And they have all this stuff that he's written in there throughout the millennia. And these words are identified as, Words I wrote when told of Ghani's death. And it says, The sand beach as gray as a dead cheek. A green tide flow reflects cloud ripples. I stand on the dark wet edge. Cold foam cleanses my toes. I smell driftwood smoke. So, and it, it, also in the pages there's a flower. And it's a flower that um, Ganima gave him. So, But the point is... Even though Leto was alone when he put on that skin symbiote, after Ganema's death, he was even more alone. He was truly alone once Ganema dies. And yes, she will die. He will live much longer than anyone else. Um, so once Ganema dies, she's the only person that, he, that even kind of shared his experience. Like, so that's why at the end of Children of Dune, when Ganema is talking to Faradin, she's like, of course you couldn't understand. You don't know what it's like to have all these memories. Leto has all these memories, and he's not human. So there's just an extraordinary amount of sacrifice. He's not a man anymore. He doesn't have genitals. He can't, like, make love with his own body. There's just so much stuff that he can't do because he made this huge sacrifice for humanity. And speaking of that, sac speaking of the sacrifice he made, let's talk about the golden path now. So the Golden Path, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, and a lot of it will be, uh, a lot of it I'll explain in my God Emperor of Dune video, but um, essentially he's leading humanity on a path so that they're not eventually extinct, right? So what, what he does in God Emperor of Dune is he, ascent, he basically suppresses space travel, and he gives humans total other peace, utter peace, total peace, and also stagnation. And, and, and the, the point was to demonstrate that people don't really like peace. They need conflict. So after this happens, uh, after he dies, after Leto goes back into the sands, and yes, that will happen, everything dies, Leto goes back into the sands, and then people are allowed, allowed to travel again. Space travel comes back, and people flee the Imperium. People, people say, we're going to go further than we've ever, ever gone before. So humanity spreads out far beyond the reaches of, of the Imperium. So he's he has made sure that humans will survive. And then there's, there's another thing that he did on top of that, the plot that runs through 
God Emperor of Dune and, and kind of comes to conclusion in God Emperor of Dune. And it's the reason he took over the Bene Gesserit breeding program, in fact. He was trying to breed a human that he couldn't see in prescience, that, but that wasn't prescient. Someone that wasn't prescient that he couldn't see in prescience. He was trying to hide people from prescience for some reason, from, from something that he calls the great enemy. And we don't know exactly what that is. Of course, in the Brian Herbert books, we get um, uh, the remnants of the Machine Empire and um, Omnius and all that jazz. We don't know what Frank Herbert was going for. Uh, we know at the end of um, Heretics, we get a really interesting scene where it's kind of like you see these Tleilaxu face dancers. And and see, that's uh, Tleilaxu in, in their civilization, they're, they're kind of like, they're like on the bottom. Like, the face dancers are on, like, the bottom. They're, like, the slave race. And the thing is, at some point in their history, they got the ability to absorb memories, right? And so they're saying that, um, how could they not think that one day um, we would gather enough memories to be even more... Because you get enough memories, and you're like the quiz that's had a rack. You can look into those other memories. And so they're kind of like watching everyone, and you think, what are what, what are these guys doing? And then you have Duncan Idaho in the later books that actually gets a vision of them. And But that's way later, and I shouldn't even be talking about this. It has nothing to do with children. I'm going too far. Going too far. But yeah, the golden path. He's, 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 he's making sure humans survive. Like, this is the only future where humans don't eventually go extinct, is what basically I take from it. And so Le Leto is also teaching humans a lesson. He says, I promised them a lesson uh, that their bones would remember. He says, don't offer up your freedom to a charismatic leader. That's like the essential point of it. Like, he becomes the tyrant to show them really what a tyrant can do when he has absolute power. This is what a tyrant can do when he has absolute power, right? Uh, and it, and, it, and it's it's just and also and I'm just gonna say this and I don't know what the reaction is gonna be but this is showing you the horror of absolute communism right a, li a little bit of socialism is good right but when it's absolute and everyone is just like there's this absolute everyone has the same thing and there's you can't really move up in the society there's no space travel but you're in total peace there's no suffering you know in in Star Trek for example. It's totally communism. It's, it's socialism. It's total 100% socialism in Star Trek. They don't have money. Like they, they they help everyone. Like even if you're like some random alien, they'll they'll give you medical care. It's like like it's it's total socialism. But in in Dune, but it works in Star Trek. It works because people um, in Star Trek they work to better themselves instead of like working to make money. They work to better themselves. But in God Emperor of Dune, it's Communism, socialism, absolute socialism, plus the suppression of the god emperor. And that just makes it absolutely horrible because there's so much that they're just not allowed to do. Like in Star Trek, you can do whatever you want. But in, 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 in what Leto did, you're not allowed to do anything. In, but it's for their own sake, right? In, in, in Star Trek, humans have evolved as people in, in a way, just on a general level, they've evolved as people in a way that they're just more compassionate, more just uh, thoughtful. But it, but that's, of course, unrealistic. I love Star Trek, but it's unrealistic. In reality, people, people are not like that. And so Leto, he had to suppress things to maintain the peace and to maintain the, you know, all that shit. But it's more like the illusion of peace as well. It's not totally peaceful. Right, he he's he's creating the illusion of peace, but even that, it kind of created a restlessness within the consciousness of mankind. Right, people are restless in this peace. You know, everyone lives in these villages that are all the same. And then, and you know, Duncan Idaho, he gets brought back in every book. Like the, when he sees one of these villages from like the sky, he's like he's like, are there more villages like this? And and someone responds, this is the shape of the empire right so people people don't like to live like that people like to be individuals and have different things going on but that's not allowed in leto's empire so uh, he's just he's trying to teach them a lesson he's he's living your instincts and that just stagnation is not good for people and then he's also giving them incentive just to, to be like when i'm dead flee 
run off into the universe and don't trust leaders. Don't don't put someone like me in power again. So we as humans are way too trusting of our leaders or with someone that's charismatic can show up and we'll just totally trust them. And we've always been like that and we still are today. And it is a, it is a problem. It is a problem because just because someone is charismatic doesn't mean that they have your best interest in mind. It does not mean that. Ted Bundy was charismatic. <laughs> so so Leto took the universe by force. No, it was Paul that kind of won, won, won over the Fremen with, um, just by being charismatic and being their hero, basically. But Leto overtook the universe with force. But Dune is not just a criticism of the charismatic leader. It, it, it's the criticism of like the system that leads to like tyrants being born. We really should not stand idly by while, while our freedoms get slowly scaled back if if your freedom is even touched a little bit you fucking scream bloody murder and you say fuck no and you you have to make noise otherwise otherwise it's just gonna keep happening over and over again frank herbert is showing you the cycle this happened in the past this happened now happened in the future i think comic book girl 19 said that on dune club by the way check out dune club comic book girl 19 but this is the way governments work even if you have someone like paul that does care there's still gonna be bad stuff that's happening he can't completely stop all the bad stop all these people from getting killed he can kind of make it good even if you have a good person like him like still that doesn't change the fact that eventually someone like leto is gonna come into power and right that's the thing leto is okay with being viewed as the villain because he is he says to maneo a character in um god emperor of dune he says i am a predator Maneo. He says, I am the predator of humanity. And he is. But humanity needed a predator. You're too comfortable. Needed, you needed the predator. You needed the predator. In, to show you how to live in your instincts. It's like the last chapter of Children of Dune. Humans, by the end of Kralozak, will once again learn to live in their instincts. So I can't wait to I get to actually making the ultimate guide to God Emperor of Dune because it is my favorite book and I can really go deep into that one. I feel like for this God Emperor of Dune video, um, I'll kind of do it. It'll be a little different. I feel like I can cover the story that happens in that one in a, in a short amount of time and then I can go in and just really dive it deep into just Leto and his inner lives and just the golden path and you know, just the deeper themes that are going on in that, because the story is kind of like, the story in, in God Emperor of Dune happens over the course of like, I don't even know, a very short amount of time. I want to say like a month, maybe. Like, it, it, it happens very quickly. I could be wrong on that. I could be wrong, but I'm thinking that it's like a very short amount of time that the entire thing happens. But it's interesting. Basically, interestingly enough, it opens up at an even further time in the future. We don't even know how far in the future this is. Like, you have people that are looking at... Basically, what we're seeing in God Emperor of Dune is told, um, it's being read from these, like, little Ixian devices that Leto left his, they're like his journals. He hid these journals away, and, like, this is what people are reading, I guess. I guess that kind of doesn't make sense, because, um, he does die in the end, so how could he have a journal of his own death? I guess he is prescient. I, I, I don't know. I, let's not get into, like, the whatever but in the beginning of this it opens up with people reading his journals i don't know if everything in the book is supposed to be from the journal but you know you get what i'm saying in fact i'm pretty sure it can't be that way because leto said in god emperor of dune that he refused to look at his own death he never looked at it so that couldn't be okay whatever that's not the point children of dune itself is like such a roller coaster of a book there's a lot going on like, Aaliyah's possession is super, super intense and super interesting, especially towards the end when the Baron finally comes out. Oh, that scene is so intense. And then Ganema, demon, let her make her own choice. Oh, God, it's so intense. And it's the thing that she is possessed by a demon. She's possessed by a malignant human ego. And that's what a demon is. Like, like you say you're wrestling with demons, you're wrestling with something inside of yourself a part of you and that's exactly what's happening to her it's a part of the baron is a part of her he's a part of her genetic memory that's what that's what's possessing her but it's very sad because you learn at the end that she could have overcome this because ganema did leto did maybe if jessica had like helped and been there when it actually started to get bad maybe jessica could have helped her helped her overcome it in some way but jessica abandoned Aaliyah. 
Um, she abandoned Aaliyah and went back to Calidar and left Aaliyah on Arrakis. She tells Ganema, I fled in terror of what I'd created. Because there was all these many Jesuit warnings about abomination, so that's why, guys, Helen Mohayim, in the first book, she's like, oh my god, the child is an abomination. Kill her, kill her, like, what the f... Uh, but, yeah, so, yeah, just Aaliyah's possession is so terribly tragic, because she didn't have a choice in any of this. Um, she didn't choose any of it, and it's really sad. It's very sad. But at the same time, it's true for Paul as well. He really didn't choose any of this. He was just kind of forced into it. He was forced into the desert and he did what he did to survive, I guess. But I, I feel like in Aaliyah, it's way worse because she's like a child, a baby, and then she's forced into like complete awareness with all these other entities all vying for just, I guess, the... What what would I call this? It's all, all vying for like presence, like space and the consciousness and the awareness. And it's just so overwhelming and in the end you see them all come out and they're like frightened and angry and just every emotion imaginable it's like it's very intense um and it's so it's so sad to see her be destroyed and it's interesting to see jessica be consumed with horror because she knows that a part of this is her fault and she just sees that this is this is my fault and she knows that it's her fault and she has to live with it i guess um, another thing in Children of Dune that I really didn't focus on in the um, in the Ultimate Guide was um, there's kind of a weird little I guess it's not weird there's like a little romance almost that forms between Faradin and the Lady Jessica. Um, he's much younger, but the Lady Jessica is of course a very beautiful woman. She's described as being very beautiful. So there's kind of like a little he's kind of hinted at. I I see it. I feel like he's kind of fallen in love with her a little bit. Um, but it's weird because he ends up having to marry Ganema. And yeah, that's the thing about the video if you wa if you watched it. There's kind of an inconsistencies in the ages of the twins in the art. Because um in the Dune mini series, Leto was much older. But in the book, Leto and Ganema are both tiny, tiny children. Right? So it's like, um I guess in the in the movie it's like uh you can't really get a kid to really you can't i don't i don't know how that you have to, you'd have to be like the best child actor ever to pull off um leto and ganema because they're adults in human bodies but in in the books faradin finds out that he's gonna have to marry ganema who's like a little child so he's like and then she says never make that mistake again she's like i might look like a child but i'm not a child still kind of weird and even in um the beginning of children of dune it actually even says that leto ganema had participated in the spice orgy which is really weird to me <laughs> that's really weird i get that they have like uh i get that they have adult minds but they re they do not have adult bodies and I don't, that's very weird but in in the opening it still guards like looking at the twins and he says these twins have have shared in the spice orgy and he's like he's like they're not children but they look like it and i'm just, i don't know that's a little weird but whatever but it is weird it's a child but with an adult's mind and not just an adult's mind they're, they're, they're millions of years old. They have memories that stretch back all the way through back, back, back when. And yeah, it makes them creepy. Just like Aaliyah was creepy in Dune, they are quite creepy in Children of Dune, I think, in a lot of ways. And even Jessica's totally freaked out by Leto. She's like, holy crap, this demon child. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it, it, I love that scene where she's talking to him and she thinks that she's in control of the situation. <laughs> and in the end, she realizes, wait, um, this dude is literally manipulating my very, he's, he's, he's manipulating me through voice and I didn't even realize it. Like she comes to the real realization suddenly and she's like, holy shit. Like, what are you? Um, but yeah, I love Children of Dune. It, it is, I, I don't even like to rank the books. I know that God Emperor is my favorite, but I also love Children of Dune and I love Dune and I love Dune Messiah. I love them all. And I also, I love Chapter House and Heretics as well. Um, I know a lot of people don't like those final two as much, um, but I, I enjoy them. And honestly, I even enjoy, I enjoy some of the Brian Herbert stuff. See, that's the thing. It is, it is different reading Brian Herbert. You kind of just have to kind of like separate it in your mind if you have to, uh, because it is Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, they're different writers and the style is very different. It's like if George R. R. Martin had a son and then his son tried to write A Song of Ice and Fire and pick it up and finish it that, that no G george r martin is he's too good like you can't like so, some writers are just like they can't be emulated and so like you're used to such amazing writing and then you go to someone even if they're good 
they're not Frank Herbert. They're not George R. R. Martin. They're not, you know, Stephen King. Um, you know, but it's it's okay. They're okay. I don't hate them, but and I, and I don't. I'm not like in love with them because people always ask me and like, do you, Brian Herbert books? What do you think? Do you hate them? Do you like them? What do you think about them? And I'm like, I mean, I don't hate them. I don't love them. I understand that people view them as non-canonical and I totally I totally get it because like I said before I don't know I don't think that what Brian Herbert did with uh the butler and jihad is what Frank Herbert had in mind at all I don't I totally I'm totally against it because like just in the in the first chapter well if it, in the first chapter of Dune yeah once we gave ourselves over to machines in the hopes that this would set us free but this only permitted other men with machines to enslave us other men with machines that was what the butler and jihad, jihad was about it was not like being afraid of ai necessarily because ai we, we if you don't program a computer to feel emotions and to feel pain and to feel anger and hate then it won't right but a, a person in control of ai that is the real danger right because we are the way we are because of these evolutionary processes that have led us this way but if we design a machine we don't have to make it like us right the real danger is the people in power of those machines and that's what i think is super scary i think that's oh that is something that we are going to have to face pretty soon here like we're going to have to face it people are going to be in in control of like some awesome awesome power pretty soon here that's going to happen See, the question of, I think that, you know, sh shows like Westworld do a good job of uh, bringing up the question of sentience, right? Because what is sentience? We don't know whether sentience is merely an emergent property of a complex mind or if it's something more. Because if it's merely an emergent property of a complex mind, that means that a machine could totally be sentient. But if it is something more, and I don't know... I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, who knows? But if it is something more, then I guess m maybe even if a robot is very complex and it seems to be sentient, maybe it's still not. But then that's the question. How could we ever know that? How could we ever know it? And if it is sentient and it is feeling pain, that's a huge problem. That's a huge problem. And I just I just fear so much for it. But this conversation is getting a little bit off the rails. So I think we're going to stop it here. Thank you guys for listening. And uh, thank you guys so much for supporting my videos. Check me out on Patreon. Uh, peace out, dudes.